And we'll keep tabs uh, with Robert Clark and also with Evan Lambert, who's on the field. But I also want to bring in right now someone who has a very long career tracking and catching fugitives like Mr. Cavalcante. Uh, Lenny DePaul is a former commander with the U.S. Marshals. Lenny ran the largest fugitive task force in the world. It was here in New York and in New Jersey. And on average, Lenny arrested 100 to 120 fugitives per week in just his region alone. So you're perfect for this moment, Lenny. I'm sure you're following this breaking news along with us. I kind of thought we'd have sort of a, a look back at how the day was today in you know tracking um, Danilo Cavalcante, but that's not it. We're actually in the midst of what's called a rapidly evolving situation in, in Longwood Gardens. Before I get into your expertise, I just want you to react to some of the things you just heard uh, from uh, Robert Clark. Absolutely, and good evening, Ashley. I mean, Rob and his his crew, they're the best in the business. I mean, U.S. Marshals being the premier agency in this country, along with their, you know, federal, state, and local partners, uh, it's, it's a collective effort. Uh, you know, it's a, it's more of a force multiplier. But, uh, you know, the way he's responding, uh, they're doing it by the numbers. They have to. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this fugitive's hungry. I mean, he's tired. He's sleeping with one eye open. Uh, I think human instincts have turned into animal instincts. Um, Desperate people do desperate things. He's breaking into homes and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I, I agree with Rob. I think it's, I think it's going to be a matter of time. Uh, the sightings are important. You got to exhaust all these leads. Uh, this one sounds pretty pretty interesting to me so far. So, uh, and they're going to keep it close to the vest. But uh, they certainly have enough manpower, state of the art equipment, to the assets that are deployed, uh, aviation support. Uh, I know the uh, the bloodhounds. Uh, it's a little tough with the climate out there right now. But uh, you know, they're flying drones. Uh, they got a lot of a lot of things uh, that are happening right now. So they're hitting on all cylinders, actually. So you, um, you know, your expertise is, is real deep. You were called on for the Boston bomber, finding him. You were called on for the DC sniper. Uh, both of those guys were found. How do things change, though, when you're talking about a guy who obviously had no plan, right? He's day eight, and he's only like two and a half miles outside of the place he's trying to get as far away from as he can. Do you know what to do when you have a guy who didn't plan for this? Well, well, obviously, he didn't have a plan B. I mean, he got out. He scaled that wall. I mean, a month prior, apparently, another inmate did the exact same thing. Uh, so he followed suit. But once he got out there, you know, he zigged when he should have zagged. I mean, he's lost right now, and he's frustrated. Uh, he can live in a tree. He can live under a rock. I know he's five foot, 120 pounds. But, uh, you know, advantage law enforcement, it, it, it's tough. 95 degrees. He's probably got about 1,000 mosquito bites. I mean, he's hurting right now. Uh, which is good. I mean, it, it, you know, let let this play out. I know it's been eight days. It's frustrating for the community and the folks that live around there. But, uh, you know, again, he's sleeping with one eye open. He's at a disadvantage. I'm just hoping, uh, you know, when this thing goes down, when that news starts tightening, uh, like tonight, that perimeter is tightening up a little bit. What's his mindset? Uh, is it suicide by cop? Is he going to get into a home? Is he going to is it going to be a hostage situation or a barricaded suspect? You know, these are a lot of things that are going through Rob and his folks and the people that are downrange. Uh, you know, right now, uh, it's going through their minds. So they have to react accordingly. And hopefully, this thing goes down without incident, and uh, they put this thing to bed sooner than later. So, Lenny, hold on one second. I just want to check with my control room. Uh, you know, we're kind of moment to moment on this, and we've got a reporter on the ground who's watching what he can when he's not getting shoved out of the way of the. Marshals and all the other tactical teams who've just arrived on mass. So uh, just checking with the control room is, is Evan. Does Evan have something, guys? I saw something, uh, just a quick shot of him getting wired up. Does he have something from the site of the Longwood Gardens? OK, we're, we're, getting, we're getting him wired up. Uh, he may have something to tell us, Lenny. Um, in the meantime, I did want to ask you about Night Moves. Uh, it's not just a great song from the 70s. It's how this guy <laughs> is getting around, right? So. What, how does that change the metric? He's not sleeping with one eye open. He's awake now. And it looks like he might very well be in Longwood Gardens right now. What does it do for the tactical teams to know that their biggest, toughest work is to find him at night? Well, you put this into perspective. He's within the confines of that perimeter. He can walk around all night long. He can walk in circles. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're like I said, they're using the necessary uh, electronic surveillance and whatnot and things they can do at night with FLIR or with uh, night vision. And, and, uh, and he, you know, uh, it's just you got to be careful because he's looking for, you know, provisions. He needs water. He, he needs to break into homes like apparently he's tried to do. 
Um, but what's the end game? What is what is he? What's his plan? Uh, from what I understand, he has no devices. He's not communicating with anybody. And you also got to keep in mind it's an intense manhunt right now, Ashley. But there's also a fugitive investigation going on behind the scenes. You know, they're tearing his world upside down. Who did he talk to prior to the escape? Who visited him? You know, we call him Huzu and Nazu. Uh, you know, they're they're turning his world upside down. So just in case he does slip through the cracks. Uh, you know, maybe hijacks a car and whatnot. Uh, they're gonna, they gotta stay ahead of the curve. So there's, so, there's a lot. Point. Good point. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.